Nation, welcome into DMVR Buffs Primetime. We're presented by Illegal Pete's, everyone's go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. What a day it's been, and Nikki Edwards joins me today. Hey, Jay. Welcome back. <laughs> it's good to see you again. I haven't hung out with you or even like, we haven't seen each other in a minute. You went to Vegas and twice. I did my thing, but... Jake's like, you want to come on the show? And I'm like, sure. You found me on a good night when I'm not working, so. You've saved my ass today. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, That's everyone, what I'm here for. Prayers up in the chat for RK. He's still, he's still rough right now, recovering from whatever Vegas threw at him. But we had Pro Day today. Oh, I, felt like a, I mean, it's a really long event, but it was. Mm -hmm. It felt like such a long day today, especially it with was like a long day. basketball and spring ball going on. They rescheduled it from the mm -hmm. snowy, snowy Thursday we had. You didn't have to experience that, but there was like, <laughs> it was coming down here in Colorado. But yeah, we saw um, nine guys, nine buffs, and then one former prince, former buff in Prince and Transfer, Blake That's Sandstrom. Right. But uh, he was throwing for them today. Uh, yeah, it was a you know good day, usual pro day. Good to see you know the guys working. I thought Jordan Dominic had a good day, and Derek McLennan, the defensive ends, really um, you know impressed me. And you know, their measurements, just uh, their verticals and their speed. I think that's something that they all mentioned after the during the interviews that they wanted to showcase their speed and showcase to the scouts that you know they, some of them are like fifth years, but. You know, they're still young at heart, and they can still c contribute to um, NFL teams. Yeah, there's 22 teams there. Yeah. Uh, I think total of 23 plus one CFL team. Um, by my observations. Observations? Let's hear your observations, Jake. Um, hold on. I'm getting into it. Teams that were at CU's Pro Day. God damn it. Hold on. <laughs> teams that were at CU's Pro Day. Broncos, Niners, Colts, Raiders, Chargers, Steelers, Browns, Titans, Cardinals, Lions, Packers, Commanders, Giants, Jags, Vikings, Seahawks, Chiefs, Eagles, Falcons, Panthers, and Bucks. It was all scouts. There weren't any, you know, we know what it was Big at Pro faces. Day. Yeah, yeah, there was no, uh, <laughs> you know, GMs or head coaches or anything. But the NFL was, their presence was made in Boulder for sure. Uh, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So total of 10 guys worked out, including Blake Stenstrom. Uh, the players were all out in support. That was good to see. So Shador yeah, was out there. There's a lot of faces there. Mm -hmm. Cormani was there. Yes. Like Shane Cox was there. <laughs> yeah. At least you said it. <laughs> uh, Shane Cox. Yeah. Uh, Coach Prime. Coach Prime, of course. I Hold saw up. Cam. Yeah, we're they're all like showed up to support their guys. I guess it's off Tuesday for them since they're not practicing today. So might as well pull up and support your guys and their ambitions and getting to the NFL. But a lot of support there and. Yeah, a lot of NFL teams. I don't know. I don't don't quote me on this, but it seems like there is a larger NFL presence this time around than there was last year. Mm -hmm. Kind of felt like that, at least for me. No, definitely. So like, it wasn't as there was like more total people there last year, and I think it was because just coach just got hired, and it was a lot of excitement around Boulder and stuff. But this year, there were just a better quality of player there, mm -hmm. so there was just more NFL attention. Um, maybe not as much media attention, but it was a uh, it was an interesting pro day. It was cool to see everyone coming out and support. Let's get into it though. Um, really, everyone was there, I guess, to see Jordan Dominic. I think he's the guy that mm -hmm. you circled before. Of course, Zay uh, couldn't compete. He's still kind of recovering from that shoulder injury. He would have been the guy, but uh, De or, uh, Jordan Dominic uh, was really the guy. I think everyone was there to see. He was the first we talked to as well. Mm -hmm. And Juwan Mitchell, I think he was, um, you know, dealing with, you know, of course, off the field issues and talking to him and reconvening with him, just seeing where his he his head is at, because, you know, he was a productive linebacker until uh, he was dealing with stuff. But there is, you know, some potential there for him to, you know, be that, you know, that linebacker in the box and mm -hmm. uh, contribute to NFL teams uh, catching up with him. Also, uh, yeah, I de definitely think Jordan Dominic was the prominent guy there since he was such a big contributor this season and really a leader um, on the field. Also, Taj Olsen, I think, could be paired with him as well. Maybe not the same production, but what we heard from Taj was just like he wanted to show NFL scouts. Even though he did get injured, um, he's still able to play, he still has that mobility, and still you know, can provide a team something, whether it be on special teams or something like that. But you know, faces that at least during the season that we didn't really get to talk to very much. Yeah. And now, you know, we kind of touch base with them and see where their heads at. I thought Roger Ward's interview was 
fun. Mm -hmm. It was his answer about like his off season, what he's doing. He said he's getting into painting a lot. Yeah, he's and, a painter now. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's an avid painter. But something that I thought was really cool is that he's giving back to his um, community and really putting an effort in just trying to help people uh, where he came from and just doing things outside of football that um, he's been looking forward to. And it was really cool to see um, just the thing that because you know we talk about football and all that, but just seeing once the off season hits and once you graduate college, it's like okay, well. You know, what do I do What's now? Next? Yeah, right. <laughs> so he's definitely putting um, positive efforts towards his community and, you know, ch like art, being an artist. And I think it's really cool to see like that side of him as well. And I think he was um, a player that stood out to me. Definitely. Just in terms of his speed. I wish we had, we don't have the numbers yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still refreshing the, my email right now, hoping that we get these at some point during the show. Um, it would provide a lot of definitive context. Yes. Jake Let's was see. there though. He was he was <laughs> kneeling down. He was right next to the cones. Time in the forties. <laughs> I had to. I was trying to. I've got all these times written down too. Um, you mentioned Rod Ward. We'll get to the interviews a bit later, but on the field stuff here, um, really, I think had one of the most impressive verts. It looked like he jumped out of the gym. Basically, it was yeah. thirty-five and a half. Mm -hmm. um, of course, much smaller than guys like McClendon and Dominic and Taj Alston, but. Even Derek McClendon, he had a 35-inch vert as well. Yeah, and So Juwan he got Mitchell. up there. And Juwan Mitchell. Juwan Mitchell had some great explosion also. Um, again, these are unofficial. These are just, you know, hand-timed on my phone, so who knows exactly how official these are. But I got Cavassier smoke at a 4.51 and a 4.46. He was flying. Yeah. He, I mean, I think that's what you want to see as a scout and being a running back is that speed and getting low to the ground. And he was uh, turning on the Jets today. I... I think I saw his broad jump as well. He he was frustrated with his first one, but then mm -hmm. he, he did it again and got a better one. It, you know, there's so many different specific measurements that you go through in pro day, but the 40 is of course the most exciting one and intriguing one because it's like um, I don't know. I feel like with every position you wanna you wanna find speed and there's certain things that you're looking for, whether you're a defensive end, you're wide receiver, but. As a running back, you definitely want that speed, some Dylan Edwards speed. We should have right. got Dylan Edwards out there to run the... <laughs> hey, the track team was out there. I was looking if Dylan was with them or oh, not. Oh, true. I didn't yeah. see him, though. No, he wasn't out there, I don't think. Um, but Rod Ward, he looked pretty good today also. He ran a 4.46. Four, um, I hand-timed him at a 4.56 on that first one, so pretty close. He's around that 4.5 um, range. And he's another guy I think you look at just at the speed. And he was, he was someone we were told that was one of the fastest players on the team last year. And we saw it in one of those scrimmages towards uh, the end of camp before the season started. Um, yeah, again, still refreshing for numbers. Hopefully we have them. But um, we'll, we'll go to interviews here because there was some interesting things said. Uh, Juju, Juju Mitchell said if he played this whole season, he felt like he could have been a first-round pick. Yeah, that, that, you know, I mean, that's ultimately up to like his destiny. I think I, let me pull up, I'm pulling up stats from this season as well. I mean, Juwan Mitchell, 32 tackles, uh, he played in seven games, two TFLs. Yeah, I think there was this missed opportunity for him during the season due to off the field issues. He would have been a starting linebacker mm -hmm. in my eyes. I mean, definitely. And well, his <laughs> a first round draft pick, though, I think it's just like we need there needs to be that like visual on the field, that product on the field in order to make that testament. But it's good to have that confidence. I think exactly there is some potential there with him to be a first round draft pick. But he really had to, you know, like maybe a late Nate Landman back in the day performance, right. like those old CU linebackers mm -hmm. to really get that um, type of title. But still, you know, it's. I think you should have that confidence going in and maybe if things are different, that could have been the reality, but we'll see when the draft comes around, you know, if he lands anywhere, I think it's going to be, um, seeing the bus on the ticker is going to be an interesting, uh, right. time. <laughs> he was a guy though, that when he was on the field, he really was one of their best defenders right? last season. So, and he does have NFL talent. It's all off the field stuff with him. Um, how teams are going to, how deep they're going to dig into that, what they really come to conclusions based on what they saw, I guess, or mm -hmm. heard from uh, Coach Prime and the rest of the coaching staff this year. But I had him at a 4.79 and a 4.7140. 
Um, I'd like to hope that that was a bit faster. He ran probably a 4.6, but that's right around NFL speed for a linebacker. He's a bigger linebacker, too. Yeah, I think one thing that he did mention is you. he's like, the whole world saw me and what happened uh, at Arizona State, but he's not going to let you know that narrative and things that happen off the field define him. Mm-hmm. I mean... I think one thing uh, when you go into the NFL, they do interviews and other, you know, other non-physical tests. And I think through those tests, teams can identify if, you know, Juwan Mitchell is really a guy that they want on their team. And I think through that, he can also continue to prove himself that he has changed. You Mm -hmm. know, he has a different mindset. He wants to go to work and, you know, all the things that NFL teams are looking for. So, yeah, the the drafting process is, you know, much more than just the numbers. It's also, you know, what the chemistry and the character you want to build within, you know, that franchise. Really just evaluating them as people. I mean, that's a huge thing about this process. That's what I think the most important part of the combine. And really, I think probably the biggest takeaways from these 20 some teams today was what they learned before the, the on the field workouts, what they learned when they were talking to Coach Prime, talking to these position coaches, getting all the film, that's probably the more valuable things that was learned today. Um, we'll do some more stuff on Pro Day here. Uh, one little note, I talked to Victory Johnson today. Um, he told me he got hurt in the middle of the season. He's out with a shoulder injury right now, so he's not going to be at spring football. Oh, he got really hurt. Yeah, uh, but he's up to 245 pounds, and he's switching to outside linebacker. Oh. So he's not going to be off the ball anymore. He's another guy that's going to be playing on the edge. So there's a little nugget, I guess, from Good insight today. there. Um, yeah, it was just cool talking to everyone today. Yeah, and out. Pro Day is such a good opportunity just to, like, touch base with people because, you know, through – we usually get the, the interviews and the media sessions, but – during um, pro day, we get to talk to coaches sometimes and mostly players and just see how they're doing. Like mm-hmm. Arden Walker, of course, is dealing with that hand injury. And Yep, he had the cast on today, yeah, if you saw him. Saw him briefly and just, yeah, just to touch base with everyone, especially after the off-season pro day is like a good day just to like see how everyone's doing, say what's up. And mm-hmm. yeah, there's, there's a lot of um, cool faces there. It's just cool too because everyone, it's – much more casual, right? Like totally. they're obviously there for support, but it's not like a practice or anything really to do with this year's team. So everyone's just kind of hanging out. You can go up and talk to whoever if they're available. Robert Livingston was at yeah, he was Pro hanging Day. around. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pat Shermer, I saw. Oh, you saw Pat Shermer. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, I talked to Coach Bartoloni for a little bit. Um, I mean, so many people. I can't really name them all. It was a, a loaded day, really. Yeah. All right. Let's do some more Pro Day stuff on the other side of this break. But first, it's time to chill. Shout out to our friends over at Coors Light. Coors Light is the beer I reach for when it's time to chill. So when you want to hit reset, grab the beer that's made to chill. I can't imagine how many Coors Lights we're going to crush up in Boulder this year. This football season, come out to one of our tailgates. Um, Even the spring game, too. We'll probably have plenty of Coors Light for you all to come and crush. How many Coors Lights do you think you could down? Oh, my God. <laughs> in, let me say I gave you an hour. An hour? Yeah. Like just a regular Coors Light? Like yeah, a, just a regular, like, silver bullet. Okay. Um, I would say if I was being, like, peer pressured, probably, like, <laughs> six. <laughs> but uh, likely just just three. All right. There you go. <laughs> you can get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash DMVR. Cor- celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And then our wonderful, wonderful friends over at Game Time. Um, procrastination is something that RK and I do best. So Game Time is a wonderful service that allows us to procrastinate buying tickets and getting the best deal at the last minute. Whether it's Colorado sports, wherever you are, uh, Game Time is the best place to get tickets for not only sporting events, but concerts, events, whatever is going on in your city. You can take out the guesswork of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use that code BUFFS, B U F F S, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code BUFFS, B U F F S, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right. In my mind, there were three players who really separated themselves today, and I thought could have really improved their draft stock. Um, really, four, I guess. Mm. Kavassier Smoke, Juju Mitchell, Rod Ward, and Jordan Dominic. 
Mm. Um, Kvasia Smoke was an interesting story this year, of course. Uh, wasn't with the team for the final game, but you know the way that Coach Prime and everyone else spoke about him, there was a lot of respect, I think, mutually. And Kvasia talked about it uh, when we talked to him today in like the press conference, how he really had to change his mindset and accept the role of special teams and just like helping build this program up uh, really from the ashes. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's something that's going to carry a lot of weight with NFL teams. And also he only had two carries last year. Like he's going to be healthy. There's tread on the tires. Like he's a guy that can come in is going to be a little bit older, but has only got like, I don't know, 500 some carries in his career. Yeah. I just think he could be a sure there too. I think when we saw him coming into Colorado and what he produce at Kentucky, you know, we thought that he was going to be one of the main guys in that running back rotation of a really versatile running back room. Of course, that wasn't necessarily what happened, but, you know, you're totally right. There is a lot of, you know, energy there and potential for him to be a contributor on special teams and just find his way. I mean, running backs are just always, like, so disrespected in the league, you know, at least in yeah, terms of Yeah, they're devalued, for sure. Yeah, no, and I think... It's going to be a certain, certainly a big climb for him, but every, I agree with everything that you say with just he has a lot more you know, gas in the tank. Mm -hmm. And you know, as a running back, usually they got a lot of, they're always on, um, always have their, <laughs> wow, always have their, pet, their, wow, I can't even say this. It's been a long day. <laughs> Overall, Kavasi Smoke could day. be you know, a, a good contributor on an NFL team, likely on special teams, but they're, I think his resume from Kentucky is something that is a bright, um, positive aspect for him. We've already talked a lot about <laughs> Juju Mitchell. He definitely has the talent. Again, it's just off the field. Um, but Rod Ward, again, just that speed and just seeing how he worked in the drills, his explosiveness in the jumps as well. Mm -hmm. um, I know he didn't get a lot of on-field playing time, but he just struck, stru struck me as a guy who could get a camp invite at the very least and maybe even just pop because he has those traits uh, to make plays on the football field. And then finally, J.D., we talked to him. Um, we talked to Taj also, Taj Alston. And the duo of those guys, they were roommates, and they were out together at Daytona at the uh, Tropical Bowl, which is kind of like a all-star game. It's not quite the senior bowl. It's one of those lower-level ones. Uh, but he spoke about that experience. He said that both of them were out there kind of flying around making plays. They both mm -hmm. had some sacks. They both had some TFLs. JD said he had a pass defense. He said Taj had a forced fumble. So they were able to show it on the field in a game situation. And overall, I think they did pretty well in the drills today at Pro Days, too. Yeah, I agree. I think there were, <clears throat> I mean, three defensive ends today. They were two both like flashy guys, I think, really putting a effort into each of the measurements, each, each of the drills. And um, yeah, I think, you know, Taj Austin, too, like definitely like rooting for him and just seeing. You know, if he can get something on the next level, because he's you could see that he's just one of those guys that puts so much work into it. Same mm -hmm. with Jordan. I mean, they're such a like a fun duo together, like Jordan being the yeah. outspoken one and Taj Austin just being the more mundane one. But I think they both put together, you know, a, a more notable um, pro day just from what I saw on the field today. Once again, I wish I had numbers, but yes, I did like what they put out on the field today. Um, yeah, I saw someone ask. We'll tweet out numbers. I'm, I'm going to write something up, too, as soon as we get these. Um, hopefully later today. If not, it'll be something tomorrow. Um, let's wrap up today's pro day, though, with Zay Weaver, because obviously he didn't work out. He would have been the guy if he was available to work out at today's pro day. It's not ideal, for sure, that he has to deal with this shoulder injury and has to work through that. Um, I think that he would have been a likely day three pick if he was able to work out and do all these things and have everything go ideally. But now I think he's staring at possibly going undrafted, which is just a shame because he really would have been the headliner today if he was healthy. Oh, definitely. I mean, he was such a game changer on, on the Buffs offense this season. I mean, him and Shador were working so well together and, you know, he would have had his 40 and done all, you know, done all of those measurements and really been the guy that we've all would have went there to see and really analyze like his draft stock and injuries are, you know, just so, of course, they're just so unfortunate. And I think in, you know, in the age of college football and just with all the metrics and all the talent across the draft, the guys that got invited to the combine, there's so many, you know, different selections that you can make, you know, even from group five teams as mm -hmm. well. And when you're injured, it's, it's hard not to get overlooked. 
amongst, you know, everything mm-hmm. that scouts are keeping track of, but still amongst at least Colorado and this program, Zay Weaver is that, you know, number one guy. Yep. Of course he got invited to the combine. So him being on that pedestal, I think is helpful, but being injured is just not what you want in, in your journey to the NFL. He's got to get a camp invite. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, after the draft in April, I'm sure he'll get signed as an undrafted free agent, as will many of these guys. Um, that's it for t- today's pro day. But I couldn't help but think after or just being there and seeing these guys work out how insane next year's pro day is going to be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the media is going to be pulling up to that. That's there, sure. It's going to probably just be completely crowded. Like we're going to be in there like sardines next year. <laughs> Um, go to the top. Let me see this here. Yeah, let's go. We're looking at all the, the seniors of this year. So number one on the list, of course. Shador Sanders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, everyone's going to show up for him. I wouldn't be surprised if we get ESPN, NFL Network there, and they're going to go live with the pro day while he throws. Um, probably going to be all 32 teams. There's probably going to be some NFL GMs and head coaches mm-hmm. out there to watch him next year. And he's just going to – that's going to be the reason why pro day is going to be so big next year. But also, we'll probably see – Travis is probably going to declare after this season, too. They're all going to be there for those two guys, but it's going to be loaded. So Jimmy Horn, Will Shepard, LeJonte Wester, probably going to make it. Yeah, um, three really interesting wide receivers. Mm-hmm. And then offensive line-wise, we're very deep there as we look towards next year. Tyler Brown, uh, Tyler Johnson, Justin Mayers, um, Khalil Benson, too. Savion Washington as well. Mm-hmm. On the defensive line, Shane Cox, Chidoze Nwankwo, Torian Carter, BJ Green. Uh, I'm so excited for BJ Green. Yeah, I know. We need him here. We need him <laughs> here now. Um, linebacker wise, those are some young guys. Levante Bentley, of course, will be out there working out, I'm sure, yeah. next year. Omari and Cooper, Preston Hodge, Travis J. Travis, we already mentioned, Travis Hunter. Uh, Cameron Silman Craig, Shiloh. Uh, Trevor Woods, and then Mark Vissette. We're probably going to get some punting action yeah, at next we, year's Pro Day. All, every single position is going to be participating in next year's yes. Pro Day. It's gonna be, I thought it's going to be a long one, but it's going to be so interesting just to see all of them together and just all these different NFL teams. I mean, yeah, 22 teams are RSVP today, so they're probably going to get 32 next year. Shador is really going to be the star of the show mm-hmm. and his ambitions in the NFL and likely, and same with Travis, the number, you know, first day, number one draft pick, top 10 pick, you know, and yeah, it's, it's going to be sad to see them go, but it's going to be awesome to see them in the league, especially Travis and Mm -hmm. how they utilize him at corner and see maybe his development on, you know, the wide receiver side. I know the NFL is very specific about, guys staying within their positions but right. i think whatever travis does this year on on the offensive side of the ball is going to be very telling on where teams want to use him and how he can be utilized in you know different ways for sure um again those are just seniors too so we could have some <laughs> you know juniors of course we think travis will probably declare after this year but yeah. there's we had nine ten guys one guy outside of colorado come in to make it 10 this year at pro day it's probably going to be 20, 25 guys working out next year with a top five, two top five picks in Travis and Shador. So mm-hmm. it's going to be crazy. I cannot wait for that. Yeah. Got to get through the whole, the Big 12 season. There's so much exciting football events coming up as well. Yeah. We can't get too far ahead because I know. Uh, this is going to be a season to remember, definitely. <laughs> um, some news today. Brian Howell tweeted this out. Um, I'm going to try and pull up the tweet, but. It sounds like Demoy Kennedy and David Connor are no longer with the program. David Connor is actually away from the program. He's not uh, away. But Demoy Kennedy, a guy who transferred in from Alabama, of course, the Charles Kelly connection, and a guy who was hurt really the entire time, always showed up as one of the fastest guys on the team, mm-hmm. but just could never really get past, you know, that the hump to getting over playing special teams and being a contributor on defense. It's just a bummer it didn't work out because he really seemed like a piece that could help out this team. Yeah, Levante Bentley was certainly a, a leader within that room. And, you know, you just you just see Alabama guys come in and you're like, oh, this guy is definitely going to, you know, make an impact, contribute, especially with a defensive coordinator that came from that previous program. Mm-hmm. 
I think just expectation with him that he was going to make an impact on defense. And as you said, there was just injury and there was just never, you know, there was never that full um, opportunity there for him, which is unfortunate. But good luck to him in his next endeavor. Same with David Connor, you know. David Connor's still with the team, though. I want to make that clear. Um, oh. Just away right now. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh. He's going through some stuff, but. Yeah, bummer. We'll uh, wish the best to Des Moines Kennedy. We'll see where he lands and if he's able to really make an impact on the field somewhere. All right, let's uh, go on to the third segment. Shout out to our friends over at Illegal Pete's. Join the DMVR and Illegal Pete's Bracket Challenge for free. We're going to have prizes for the top three finishers, including diehard memberships, uh, shirt and gift cards to the DMVR locker, and Illegal Pete's gift cards. Check out all our socials for the link to sign up. Uh, I'll retweet it again on my page. It's on the Buff, Buffs page as well. Also, if you just go to DMVR underscore sports, it's all right there. Um, but shout out to Illegal Pete's for partnering with us on this. They just bring all the vibes, man. They've got all the delicious burritos, all the delicious margaritas that you could want. Uh, but go hang out. It's patio season. First day of spring, right? I know. I love their taquitos, by the way. They're, their taquitos go. are slept on. Let's the chicken go. ones, and then you get you get them smothered. Oh, you can't go wrong with illegal pizza. You really is can't. that your go-to order at illegal pizza? No, that's like my appetizer, <laughs> and then oh. I get a, and then I get a burrito and a margarita. Let's go. If I'm off clock, <laughs> illegal pizza, your go-to <laughs> spot for burritos, buddies, and beers. Um, and then shout out to us at DMVR. Follow us on all socials at DMVR underscore sports, or go to thedmvr.com slash events to check out our calendar. We got so many events going on. Uh, of course, March Madness this week. Come hang out with us. The Buffs play tomorrow night. We're going to have a watch party. Come through and hang out. Uh, you won't have to ask for the game at the DMVR bar. So, you know, I've seen a lot of people asking, you know, are we going to show the Buffs game and all that? Absolutely. Come out here, hang out. We also have a Nuggets watch party on Saturday with Breckenridge Brewery. Um, you can hang out then. Just tons of stuff. Again, check us out on all socials at DMVR underscore sports. Or go to thedmbr.com slash events to check out our calendar. All day watch alongs all week, too. What day is those? Thursday and Sunday. Thursday Sunday. through Sunday? All four days? Yep. You're going to be busy. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Alyssa just said we're going to have all day watch alongs for March Madness starting on Thursday, going through the first weekend of the tournament. Did you make a bracket? Not yet. Yeah, I'm making mine. I've my, been very busy. I'm making mine tonight. Um, well, let's talk about CU basketball then, because this team went on an eight-game winning streak, really turned around their tournament hopes, and it was still even iffy down to the end. Like that Pac-12 title game, they lost, and I think if you told a lot of Buffs fans, and if you told me going into that Pac-12 tournament, they're going to make the championship game, I would have said, oh, they're a lock for the tournament. But of course, they only get in the first four, the game against Boise State tomorrow night. I guess just your thoughts and main takeaways from what you saw from the Buffs in the Pac-12 tourney. Um, not playing Arizona was clutch. I yes. mean, I mean that was the biggest worry is confronting Arizona and surpassing them. But luckily, the Buffs got a first round by with the stretch that they had last season. They, were, I mean, not last season, and to end the regular season to put them in that position just to play Utah, a team that they beat. Washington State was, you know, of course a a uh, <laughs> stressful battle yeah. to say the least, but you know, beating a ranked team and you know, Washington State is you know, just compelling in itself in the way that they've built themselves up. They got a you know, a redshirt freshman, what's his name, who has been balling for them. It's Miles, but I still think I didn't anticipate them going to the Pac 12 championship. I think that's, I wasn't able to make it to Vegas, but I just thought if they were going to run into Arizona, which luckily they did it. And Oregon doing everyone a favor and beating Arizona was such a bonus in kind of boosting the Buffs' hopes and claiming the last ever Pac 12 championship. And I had so much FOMO. I was texting Jake. I was like, oh my God, I really wish I was yeah, there. Yeah, it's a FOMO. You know, the Buffs had a, 2-0 series against Oregon this season, so mm -hmm. I just felt like it was they were totally capable of beating Oregon, and you know they got close. Of course, turnovers was was really um, what shot themselves in the foot, and just <laughs> Nafali Dante. <laughs> He's an animal. He just he tore up um, the paint. He tore up the Buffs 
defense. He was just getting so many shots in the post. He and never missed. Did you yeah, know that? Yeah, he, wasn't he go 11 for 11? 12 for 12. 12 for 12. <laughs> See, when you have a guy going 12 for 12, it really makes things difficult. Um, and I just, I feel like, I have to like pull up the stats, but I think it wasn't as a getting everyone involved kind of effort, maybe not the same strides and same um, paint work we've seen from Eddie Lampkin, but mm -hmm. KJ Simpson just trying to do the most and keeping them within in that game. And I still think it was a battle up until, you know, the last five minutes where things just got a little sloppy and, yeah. you know, it wasn't as cohesive and like determined, I guess, you know, very broad words that they were playing previously with in the Pac-12 tournament. I think there were a lot of guys pressing in that moment. Um, yeah. Luke hit that three and they went up by one point and I think they knew they really couldn't handle Dante underneath. And so they had to, you know, make shots outside of the paint, obviously. And it just, a lot of pressing. KJ threw the ball away down the stretch there too. Um, but speaking of KJ, the All-American teams came out today. No KJ Simpson. Cra that's literally Robbed. crazy. Literally crazy. I He has been, you know, I think Tad Boyle has emphasized it to enough that he does not get enough credit, enough national recognition for the way that he plays. I mean, at least he's been averaging above 19 points per game in the, towards the end of this season. And he's just that guy that keeps – he's like, you know, he's like the quarterback of the team, basically. Mm -hmm. He keeps everyone in contention. He plays – the way he moves the ball, the way he's always interfering with offenses. He's so effective on both ends of the floor. And, you know, a lot of Colorado's success is due to him. And for him to not get on an All-American team, you know, even like Caleb Love and, you know, there's that yep. graphic of Caleb Love's stats this season and K.J. Simpson's stat this season. There's only one category where K.J. Simpson is less than Caleb Love. There's just... You know, it is. You see Caleb Love, and he is a, a very good player. But um, I think he only shot like two of twelve against Oregon. And yes, KJ has had a couple of those nights. At least my my latest recollection was against UCLA, where he only got four points. But right. with KJ, he's always playing his best. He's always the, one of the reasons why the Buffs are winning. Like even. He just he was, shows up in clutch moments. Yeah, he was always. their best player all year. He was their most consistent player all year. He deserved this award, and uh, Sorry. it's a shame that he didn't get it. Um, he he deserved it, and he got snubbed with the Skims campaign. Shame. Respect our guy KJ. <laughs> Put some respect on his name. Uh, I mean, he's even in like some a couple of mock drafts too. But oh, I, yeah, I feel like too. I feel like there is potential for him to stay. But in terms of the we'll NBA draft. Tristan and Cody, it's a good run. It's going to be a rebuilding year for sure next yeah, year. Especially in the Big 12. Oof. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> All right, um, spring football started yesterday. I want your takeaways. Would you, uh, first off, I guess, what was the biggest thing you, I think that you learned or you think that you learned yesterday when we talked to the guys? Um, I feel like, I think it was good to start with like a trenches kind of day get the offensive line. You talk to Vincent Dancy, the defensive line, and just see where they're at within their talent and what they're building. And Vin, both both of those coaches we didn't talk to last season. And yeah. I think, you know, I think you come into spring with a very positive mindset. Everything's very new. You're trying to get your guys together and build chemistry. But, you know, these are um, very... Um, qualified guys on, on both sides. I think there's a lot of talent on the offensive line to um, for Phil Lodeholt to really mold protection mm -hmm. <laughs> around um, Shador. And I think just hearing, you know, Dancy and there's a couple guys that he pointed out as well. Um, he talked think, about Quincy Wiggins. Yeah. He talked about Oak and Lola. Um, and then Dylan today had a tweet about Tajay McCoy, about how you should sleep on Tajay McCoy. We were hearing about him, too, a little bit yeah. last year from uh, Nick Williams. And, you know, he's just, you know, a young guy that is eager to learn. But you know, he, like, you know, he makes his sneaky impact and has a lot of flashes here and there. And um, Brent Davis Swain is someone, too, I'm interested to hear yeah. more about. But um, I think it was hearing from them and just hearing their mindset for the season – it's good to see them rebuild both of those sides of the ball since those were such prominent uh, problems issue last yeah, year. <laughs> going into the season. So, 
Yeah, Quincy Wiggin and Samuel Okunlola. Okunlola, thank you, <laughs> uh, have you know stood out, and I think we'll be able to you know inquire more about specific guys. And day one is always you know there's we get to ask like those broad questions and just get right. to know the coaches a little bit better. So we don't have any like there's no guys yet that have specifically been the stars of spring ball because it's day one. But I think who the people who are leading both sides of the ball have a lot of good resources to reestablish um, a big problem that the Buffs had last year. So that was definitely the one. And, of course, I think something that we all noticed and the was the talk of the town was oh, Omarion Cooper. Um, Omar, Miller. Miller. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. I'm. It's been a long it's day. It's been a long day. Sorry, guys. Omarion Miller. And, um, yeah, I think he was definitely going to be our – he was on my breakout list, of course. Just I think when you have a game like that against USC and you look about you look at – like the the time he spent in just building his game, he's going to be such an effective presence for Shador and maybe a, a more frequent target there mm-hmm. as well. He's he's a guy that um, Jason Phillips talked about yep. and um, Jonte talked about him. Yeah, I think, and Preston talked about him. All so. honorable mentions from um, them on Miller's game and where he at where he is at as a wide receiver. So. I mean, this wide receiver core is is very versatile and um, is going to it's going to be another really fun passing attack next yep. year. So, so you mentioned Miller, uh, Dylan again. He has the tweet: Tajay McCoy will be a big impact for the Colorado defense. Bro got game. A hundred emoji hashtag sleeper. <laughs> Give me two more guys who you think are sleepers on this year's team that you think could break out in spring football. Oh my god, I wish I had my breakout article up. Um, Savell Smalls. A tight end. I, yeah. Interesting. I, yeah, I think, I mean, I think we'll see how Pat Shermer wants to utilize the tight end um, there. But, you know, Savelle Smalls will be, as I imagine, just from switching from defense edge to tight end, a big blocking presence there. And um, they saw something within him on tight end. I think sometimes you just need a new star, a new look, just to show your talents and um, – I think the thing with Savelle Smalls is he was such a notable recruit going into Washington, four stars and one of the best players um, out of that state. So, you know, I think there's just some untapped potential with Savelle Smalls there. And, um, yeah, I, I think we all have Alton McCaskill on our radar Definitely. as well. Those would be my two guys – Alton has, of course, what he did at Houston can not go unnoticed and injuries and following a red shirt, of course, is, uh, it won't get many looks on the field, but I think this year he's going to be, um, you know, the main guy, the guy that, uh, coach Flea identified him as during fall camp, the guy that, you know, can get the run game going. Mm-hmm. It's the, the pesky run game and committing to the run game and, I'm I'm excited for tomorrow too, but we can get into that. But those would be my two guys that um, yeah we'll get into. I'm interested to see this season. So we got and in numbers. spring too. We got numbers. Oh, thank God. <laughs> so, uh, just going through this real quick. Forty yard dash times. Um, Javon Antonio listed out of four six three. Pretty good for a guy that's six two two fifteen. Uh, JD, a 493. Derek McClendon with a 48440. Juju with a 478. How about Leonard Payne at 62 and, and 58? 301 pounds, ran a 489. Smoke officially at a 457. Roderick Ward at the fastest time of the day at a 447. Noah Young ran a 490. Looking at the verts, um, again, we already kind of touched on this, but Juju Mitchell. McClendon and Roderick Ward, very explosive jumps, all at 35 inches. Juju and Roderick Ward at 35 and a half inches. We only had one 10 foot, or we had two 10 foot broad jumps. Roderick Ward with a 10 6 broad jump, that's really good. And then Derek McClendon, he had a 10 foot broad jump as well. Um, three cone times on the seven seconds. Kavasia Smoke did have a 7 2 6, though, that's a pretty good three cone time. Uh, Kavassier Smoke did not do the bench press. Everyone else did. 
Leonard Payne got 21 reps. That's the most of the day on the bench. Jordan Dominic got 20 on the bench. That's a great number for him. Cavassier, or he didn't, Cavassier did not do it. Roderick Ward got 18 reps. That's great for his size at 5'10, 183. Um, that's really it. Do you have any other takeaways from the results here? Yeah, I'm just looking at the. I thought Leonard Payne actually had a really nice day. Uh, for a guy who's that big mm -hmm. uh, to move that well, um, I thought he had a pretty solid day yeah, also. 49 for his 40. Yeah, that's a great time for him. Javon Antonio leading the 40 yard dash there with a 4 6. Oh, just getting Roger Ward, 4 7. Yep. 4. Yeah. So there you four go. Seconds, I tweeted 40. it out. Yeah, I had to send a quick tweet there as well. If you guys want to uh, check it out, um, it's all up on Twitter. I'll write something up tonight on this too. But uh, yeah, what a day. It's been a long one. And we're back in Boulder tomorrow. Um, it's Big technically day. spring Whoa. media day. Yeah, Coach Prime, both of the coordinators, mm -hmm. and two players. Yep, Shador, Shador and, and Seaton. Yeah, Jordan Seaton. And then we'll see if uh, we get any other... I don't know, maybe we get Shiloh or Travis, someone else. Yeah. Um, but it should be a fun day tomorrow. Yeah, we're getting all the, the main guys, and this will be at least... I don't know if you've talked to Robert Livingston yet, but this will be no, like the yet. media's first encounter yep. with uh, Robert Livingston, and there's just so much to pick their brain about, and, you know, it's so early, but just understanding their, their defensive minds and their offensive minds, and, of course, seeing where Coach Prime is, is at and... How he perceives the spring and who's really standing out to him and whatnot and how the off season goes. You know, it's like when the such a long time not speaking to them and now we're like I know. now we're now we're back in business. Finally. <laughs> it's feeling like football season. Yeah, we may ask about the spring game. I know he's been saying on like podcasts yeah, like maybe we get, surprises. Finally get some spring game details. <laughs> uh yes, for everyone that's also DM me and asked in the chat and everything, I do not have any news on anything spring day. Or spring game, sorry. You guys are probably doing something for that, right? Um, yeah, we'll we'll definitely have a tailgate. Um, we'll see exactly. We're still in the planning stages with a lot of it. So yeah. All right, questions. I should wear my glasses. Oh my god. <laughs> I got you. Uh, what were JD and Juju's official forty times? JD got a four nine three. Juju got a four seven eight. Um, I'm trying to see here. So I got so JD ran a 493. I'm at a 492 unofficial. Oh, look at that. And then Juju 478. I had him at 479, 471. Dude, look at you guys. You gotta be hired as the timer next <laughs> year. I mean, you, you're still a little bit off. I mean, we weren't even looking because we were standing. It's like all the scouts sit in bleachers and then mm -hmm. we stand like right outside and like the last cone is in between. Where all the scouts sit, so it's hard to see where their like last foot lands. But yep. you, you got it. <laughs> I know what I'm doing a little bit. Uh, what else do we got? Was Travis at pro day? He was not there. I did not see him. I'm sure he was there, but Jimmy or was actually, there. Actually, no. We saw. Um, I think Travis just left early. I think was the thing. I think mm. I saw him briefly. I didn't see him. So Jimmy Horn was there. Jimmy Horn was there. Shane Coax. I think Cokes. I already said that. Brandon Davis Swain. I saw Michael Welsh. Yeah. Um, I mean, half the team was there. So. Yeah. Many guys. Uh, Big TZ, uh, my guy with the super sticker again. Hippo character in tactical tactical gear does tactical flanking maneuver hand gestures. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Appreciate you, Big TZ. Um, Mr. Hillsman with the twenty dollars super chat. Thanks, man. Says glad to see Nikki back. Okay. Do more videos, Nikki. I know. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> Are we getting more videos? Yeah, we're going to get more videos. I guess it would be a good time to announce. Um, I'm still figuring out my partnership with the sophomore. They're currently dealing with some um, business uh, problems. They so. got some stuff to figure out. Yeah, they have some stuff to figure out. I want to get into the details, but I'm still figuring out um, establishing my podcast. Thank you for being patient. Also, thank you for listening because it is definitely one of my big career moves. It's establish my podcast and get that going, but it's all in the works. And yeah, I want to do more videos. Follow my colleague, Troy Finnegan, because he's been running the ship. Hmm. He's been running the ship. He's so good at what he does. He provides 
such great analysis. You know, he used to play football himself, and he is, you know, he's just a sports junkie that really knows everything. Like, there isn't something that I ask him that he doesn't know about. So, oh, Troy, he's really been helping me so much, and hopefully do more videos with him, and, yeah, just get more players. But, yeah, we're all getting the same Spring Media Day content, and all, mm-hmm. the, all those interviews are on my YouTube channel as well. What's your YouTube channel? Plug it. Nikki Edwards, N I K K I Edwards with three S's. Same as my, tw- same as my Twitter, same as my Instagram. So yeah, I'm, go. I'm gonna hopefully make more videos, and not hopefully, I will. Just gotta find. I'm also big news. I'm taking a three month sabbatical from my job with Yahoo Sports, so I will be off that, and I'll have the summer open. So I'm doing some more traveling, and I'll be able to dedicate more time towards uh, my reporting job. So look at you. Working my ass off, I will say. You're I will doing say the damn that. thing. You're doing the <laughs> damn thing. Uh, Atlanta State Focused and Informed says, surprise standouts for CU this year. They've got Jalen Wester and Keaton Wade. I like the Jalen Wester pick for sure. Um, for me... I want to look at my list of list of people. Sure. I mean, I'll throw out Tajay McCoy, too, just because we've heard so much hype about him. From Zinza. Um... Keep going down. I mean, DJ McKinney is a big one that we've talked a lot Miles about. Miles Slusher. Slusher. Slush was there today. He's kind of a wild card, too. Just yeah. great first game, but then got hurt and wasn't really himself the rest of the year. Uh, offensively, I mean, Omari Miller doesn't even count anymore. I feel like everyone's on him. <laughs> Everyone knows about him. Yeah. Um, and then I'll throw out Michael Welsh, too. I've thrown him out a few times, but I'll throw yeah. him out again. Draylon Miller? I I mean, I love the young freshmen that we got coming in, both uh, yeah. Draylon and Cam Michael. So we'll see. Uh, Draylon, of course, in Boulder at this point, probably not enrolled, so we probably won't see him until the summer. But what's the name of your podcast? Name of my podcast, CU Sports Report um, Podcast with Troy Nicky. I should probably come up with like a better name, but I'm ca- I'm staying with my um, company. So there you go. Give me a very on brand. CU Sports Report podcasts and follow CU Sports Report on Twitter for updates on that. So, um, my biggest offensive sleeper again, I'd probably say Michael Welsh. Um, RK mentioned him a few weeks ago, but Assad was seen just everything that we've heard about him and his talent. Um, I'll throw him out there, mm-hmm. and then at tight end. Uh, again, Sam Hart, the new guy out of Ohio State, I think is someone who obviously not many people have seen, but could be a massive addition to this team. Yeah, I feel like I think we saw with Michael Harrison a bit, like even a walk on, you know, he didn't Sam Hart didn't get that much action at Ohio State. But with, you know, new looks with, you know, an offense that maybe w- works better towards an off a tight ends favor. Then we could see, you know, some flashes from Sam Hart there and um, mm-hmm. Colorado kid. So yep. that's cool. Local kid. Yeah, we'll see what he brings to the field. You, watch, you haven't watched any film on him. I mean, there's not. On Sam Hart? Yeah, it's he, all... he's played four games at Ohio State. Yeah, it's all everything I looked and I could find was all like high school recruiting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> he <laughs> those, has like some Ohio State practice those stuff. Huddle but tapes. That's it. Exactly, yes. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Is there anything else, Alyssa? All right. Thank you guys for uh, staying patient, for tuning in on this yeah. evening show. Especially here. for me. I am I I slipped up a quite a quite a bit there, but yeah, I you're, promise my head is fine. mostly screwed on. Maybe it's my hair dye. I don't know if you could tell, but <laughs> I, I, could I remember tell. last time on the podcast, I asked if I should dye my hair red, and people said no, and then I ended up doing it. But When did you do on that? On camera, you can't really tell. I did it in January, and then I got it re-dyed on Saturday, just in time for spring ball. It's been that long since I've seen you that... I know. That's crazy. I know. We'll get together soon. Chiba Hut soon. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Everyone wish RK well. I don't know uh, if we get him back tomorrow or what the deal is, but we will be in Boulder tomorrow. We'll have plenty of content uh, from, quote-unquote, Spring Football Media Day, I guess. Yeah. I mean, we're getting all like the, the heavy hitters. We, we are. Get, we're getting we coach, are. coordinators, Shador, and Seeds. So... Should be fun. Like, yes, yeah, a lot of content to sort through in interviews and insights to unpack. Uh, last minute super chat from Big Teasy here. Uh, how did Nikki get started in the media game? Yes, we've been waiting patiently for more content and waiting on the Jake slash Funky Dope producer pod off company. <laughs> uh, we still need to figure that one out. But uh, I forgot about that. 
That's well, on the old to-do list. That's yeah. That was <laughs> that was been pushed pretty far down at this point. Yeah, maybe after the tournament. That was a plan, like when it was super slow and we were just like bored. Yeah. That we came up with that, but uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, back I to the still question. I want to do though. it. Yeah, we'll make it happen for sure. How did I get involved in the media game? Yes. Uh, long, long time ago, I, <laughs> I uh, used to run a student publication on CU's campus called The Bold, and uh, the sports editor left, and I was like, well, I like the 49ers, so I'm going to do this. And I just got, I, I like, you know, I used to watch a lot of sports with my dad, and he really got me into loving sports, and I was majoring in journalism, so I'm like, let's do this. Uh, through being the sports editor, I started going to spring practices with uh, Carl Durrell, and everyone's like, who is this person? This is back when um, Henry was still the yeah. Buffs guy. The Buffs guy, guy here. Yeah, yeah. this mm-hmm. is before Jake came on. So yep. this is my uh, uh, end of senior year. The rivals person, um, Justin Guerrero, left, and he's like, hey, would you like this job? And I'm like, sure, I'll, I would love to have this job. I did the 111 season. Carl Durrell and Mike Sanford. It was really tough. Brutal. Jake came onto the beat, and we were both like the new kids on the block. Yep. And yeah, and then slowly but surely, everything kind of changed dramatically. And yeah. that's how I got into it. Everyone just kind of welcomed me with open arms, and I started building relationships with people. But yeah, long story short, I find myself making new relationships every day. And I love what I do. I sound sarcastic, but I truly do. No, hell yeah. You're good at what you do. <laughs> Um, thanks again for coming down here and saving my life today. I really appreciate it. I know, I know you had that look too. in your eye. I was like, Jake probably needs someone to do the pod today. I yes. Think I can do it. I thought I was going <laughs> to be sitting my here by arm. myself. <laughs> I was going to try and do a 45 minute or by myself, but uh, you really saved me. All right, chat. We'll be back tomorrow. Tons of stuff to get into tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Follow Nikki. See you then. Bye. Let's go, Buffs. <laughs> Like the mayor.